Before we start this video, I'll take you all the way back to day one when I first built this ecosystem. Apart from the initial isopods, springtails, worms and millipedes, I actually decided to leave this ecosystem for 120 days. The reason I do this is so the bio load can build up just like in an aquarium and at the same time the cleanup crew also gets to develop and bring on the next generations. I also raised the poisoned art frogs from tadpoles. This also gave me a bigger sense of achievement knowing that I've actually raised them from a tadpole. And the reason this was so much more personal to me was because that the frogs themselves can't actually be fully mature until around one year old. This meant I knew I would have to have waited at least 420 plus days until I finally got my first batch of tadpoles. This meant that it was the start of the bloom, the tadpoles and what's to come. At 434 days, I got my first batch of tadpoles. You can also start to see how the poison dart frogs themselves are really, really vibrant now. And the more mature they get, the more vibrant they get. And I know exactly what you're going to tell me. Don't worry about those tadpoles. The mother or the father actually take those tadpoles down to the water area themselves and they make sure that those tadpoles are in the water. However, for me, being my first batch, I wanted to make sure that I delivered those to the water area myself. Thus bringing the first generation of tadpoles. This is so, so exciting for me. And I actually can't wait until these finally reach maturity. And this is just a small reminder as well to myself that you actually can't really rush ecosystems. You just have to give them time to do their own thing. And believe you me, it will. Because as you'll all know, nature always finds a way. The moss itself and the plants and the actual life of the ecosystem was really, really popping. The plants just took over everything, the philodendron to the ficus, every single plant and every single thing in here just started to look really, really lush green. This is from the moss, the plants, the ficus, philodendron, every single thing just started to come to life. And as this is all happening, my first ever batch of mushrooms actually started to arrive. And what's crazy is I didn't even add these mushrooms in here. The mushrooms just arrived themselves and every single time they arrive, they always leave this brown residue just absolutely everywhere in the ecosystem. And this really was just fascinating. How did they get here? And what actually started to happen is these mushrooms, they started to come every two to five days that only last for 48 hours, but they'd return within that two to five day period. And I couldn't even pin an exact time on why or how, or even I guess the cycle of the mushrooms and why they would be here or why they would last so long one time and the next time they wouldn't last so long. It just, it just happened. And you've probably been able to tell by the clips that yes, these are the first generation of frogs that actually arrived on land. So those tadpoles we had at the very start, finally, we've got the first generation of frogs, of which you can see are just so, so cute. And from the clip here, you can see the colors of the mature adults from the juveniles. And by the way, how about this catch? But if you miss it, make sure you go back and actually rewatch it. It was a phenomenal catch. And I just want to talk a little bit about these mushrooms. When they first appear, they're almost like these tiny little stumps. And then you're talking within five to eight hours later, they are just these absolutely huge mushrooms in bloom. What's crazy though, is you have one side of the tank where they're in full bloom. And then this little corner here, for example, on the right, where they're just almost like these little stumps starting to appear again. But what's nuts is you almost have like these pocket climates within each single side of the ecosystem where things develop differently to every other thing. And next, I wanna show you how sassy these poison dart frogs can actually be. All you need to do here is turn up your volume and listen to the squeak. <laughs> and if you are wondering why they're so tame, this is because every single day I manually miss this whole thing myself. Ordinarily, you can use auto miss systems, but I don't like to do that. I like to be very, very involved in what I do. Now, let's talk a little bit about the diet. Every single time you feed them, you have to make sure you dust every feeding or offering in calcium dust. This just makes sure that they get the extra vitamins and extra nutrients that they need. This goes from flightless fruit flies to micro crickets to aphids to worms, but every single thing you feed them, just make sure that they are dusted. And what I actually noticed all the way through this whole process is that they absolutely love the mushrooms that grow within here. So sometimes I will get the mushrooms, just pull them off myself and put them straight into that water area. 
And right now you can see just truly how much they actually love just nibbling on the mushrooms. I also keep aquatic slugs, aquatic isopods and aquatic snails. All of these things are all additional pieces of food that can be eaten by those tadpoles. But every now and then I will just pick a mushroom myself and just, yeah, just place it straight into that water area. And whilst I'm here, I just want to ask you to smash that like button. It would really help the algorithm. And if you want to subscribe and hit that notification icon, it means you get all of the updates on my actual channel itself. I have been predominantly doing a lot more shorts, reels and things like that recently. But all of the content is just as action packed as the rest. And I also want to know, is there a long form update you want to see on any tank in particular? Do you want to see some certain content? Do you want to see me build a certain tank? What do you want to see from this channel? Just let me know in the comments. Because as you'll know already, I always do my best to keep up with the content that you guys are asking me to do. And at the same time, any updates on the tanks that you want to see. It's actually the sole reason I decided to do a long form update on this tank itself. Because all of you beautiful people kept asking me to do an update. If you are wondering, I missed it down every single day. I feed them every two to three days. And that's a variety of different foods. I also then cut the tank itself. I'll cut the plants down, that's every two to three weeks, and that generally just keeps on top of itself. They will eat some isopods, they will eat the cleanup crew, and this really does just keep them going. All the additional food is because I know that it'll keep them going, and it'll keep them very, very healthy. And you'll notice at the ground level of this vivarium, it was starting to actually look a little bit bare. So what I decided to do was get some seeds from aquatic plants and actually plant them in here. And I mean, this thing just absolutely took over. But what was really nice is that the frogs actually had some sort of like little carpet every single time they came to see me at the front of the tank whenever I came home from work. And this plant just really, really added a lot of colour and a lot of vibrancy to the ecosystem. And last but not least, I was getting some finger hugs from this frog. So if you did like the ecosystem update, don't forget to smash that like button, hit subscribe, notification icon, and as always from me, peace and love, I'm out.